Hello and welcome to AI4. Our next session is titled Solving Real World Problems with AI. It'll be led by Kane Sadok, who is the co-founder and CEO of HomeGuardian.ai. Please join me in welcoming Kane to the virtual stage as he turns on his camera and starts sharing his slides. Take it Thank away. You. So what I'd like to talk to you guys about is a really ethical application of artificial intelligence. And, and your AI gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes. Um, either people have watched too many Terminator movies or are worried about their job. Um, when realistically what we can do with AI is really augment the way that we provide care uh, to people. So what I'm about to talk to you about is aged care, disability care, and how we can augment the health care sector to assist our aging population and why I think that this is going to be the most lucrative market in the next five to 10 years. When we look at aged care as a whole, from if you can't tell by the accent, I'm from Australia. And in Australia, we have a dramatically aging population, which is actually mirrored globally. So by 2047, we're expecting there to be a 100% increase in the number of people that need care. So we have a dramatically increasing demand for care. Approximately 100 million people currently are working in the aged care sector globally. Half of them are about to retire and go into care themselves. So I'm sure you can see that we're we have an issue with supply of people to, to actually provide this care. And something that's really interesting and unique about the aged care and disability care sectors is that they are almost immeasurable with how much they're using technology to augment this care. It's very manual, very traditional, and isn't something that, um, that people look at from a technology standpoint, which from uh, an innovation and disruptive perspective means that it is ripe for disruption. Looking at the global populations, we're expecting over 2.1 billion people to be over the age of 60 by 2050. And what that means is that we're expecting elderly people to outnumber children under the age of 10. And we're also expecting elderly people to um, outnumber youths as well by 2050. And that's really strange to me that you're going to have, you know, more, more grannies and you're going to have children running around the place. When we look at how these elderly people are going to be living, uh, they'll be living independently longer. So where culturally, you know, you have a lot of a lot of populations globally where culturally the parents will live with their, their younger um, family and things like that. That is changing. People are becoming more independent. So you have people that are living by themselves where traditionally they would have the care of, of family members. What that means is that we have a dramatically decreasing workforce, a dramatically decreasing supply for care. We have a dramatically increasing demand for care. That means that we've got lack of staffing conditions. We have people that are potentially not, not the, the most fit for the industry, but because we need those people, we need those gaps filled. That means that you have a rise in things like neglect, abuse, unseen falls. Um, you, you have a dramatic reduction in staffing efficiency and a reduction in the care that is provided to people like your mom and dad and my mom and dad. When we look at this, we actually have things like falls. So falls are the most acute example of a, a lack of care. And it actually is the leading cause for deaths for people, uh, elderly people. And a statistic that really, really shocked me is that we have more deaths globally from falls than we do from drug overdoses. And we have a war on drugs. So we don't really have a war on falls. And to me, you know, the statistics are, are, are really staggering. So We've got about 12 million, 12 million people that are laying on the floor for over an hour before they get found, many of whom end up dying. And that is people like your mother and father, my mother and father, people's uncles and grandmothers and neighbours. These are the types of people that we're talking about. We just simply don't have the human capital to care for that global ageing population. It is not something that we can throw bodies at to, to solve the problem. The only way we can solve this problem globally is through disruptive, innovative age tech. So the solution that we have for this issue is Home Guardian. Home Guardian is a patented, world first, artificial intelligence driven behavioral analysis device. So while it sounds like a giant mouthful, it's actually not that complicated. What we do is analyze the behavior of human beings in a room and alert when something abnormal happens. The device looks the way it does because it was designed, designed in conjunction with elderly people. So they told us this is what they feel comfortable with. It looks the way it does, neutral tones, wood grain, you know, it doesn't look like a spaceship. It's what people feel comfortable with in their room. It detects abnormal behavior. So we actually analyze the human behavior and the interaction of the people and other people and people in their surroundings. So it knows that it's normal for you to sit in a chair or lay in a bed, it knows it's normal for you to pick up a cup and drink from it, but it knows it's not normal for you to lay on the ground or for you to scream for help or for someone to be striking you or vice versa. 
we can track this behavior over time and actually predict the decline of health. So we can proactively actually alert when there is issues that are arising. We use multiple sensors to do this. So just like the human brain has multiple sensors, we use multiple sensors too. Like I said, we can detect incidents, we can detect falls, we can detect abuse. It automatically will escalate to carers, to family, to neighbors, to anyone that is nominated. It requires no installation, you simply plug it into power. So like other smart home devices, this is super simple and can be installed by the people themselves that are being monitored. We can actually detect things like COVID-19 symptoms, flu-like symptoms, other illness symptoms, purely by analyzing the behavior of the people. We can actually alert when there's out of place objects. So if you know the, the way the room is set up isn't appropriate, we know where all of the objects are in a room. Our AI knows what all of these things are. And it is actually private and secure. So we process everything on the edge. There is no compromise of privacy or dignity and it, it doesn't send or store or, or, or transmit any photos or images or recording at all. I'm gonna show you a quick example of how our AI thinks. So this, this is an example of a lady who is in an aged care home and she falls. As soon as it picks up that fall, our AI alerts the carers to come and assist her. Likewise with this gentleman, he's getting out of bed and this is where most falls actually happen. As soon as he falls, our AI picks that up and will alert that he needs assistance straight away. In this one, it actually picks up before he hits the ground because moving through the air horizontally is not normal behavior. When we look at what we can do with our technology, we can apply it to other areas too. So we can actually prevent SIDS by alerting when babies are rolling from their back onto their belly or obstructing their face with a blanket or a pillow. We can measure their respiratory rate and heart rate from outside without any wearables, without any contact from the device itself. We can alert when children go into pool areas. So we can tell you that a child is in the pool area and that they need assistance straight away and alert again if they break the surface area of the water. And lastly, we can use our technology for school. So we can alert when somebody's in the school that isn't meant to be there, we can measure based on uniform. We can alert when there is a gun or a knife or a weapon in screen immediately to lock down the school and prevent death. What we're trying to do is use AI for good and, uh, and we really are saving lives. This is our device, this is what it looks like. Uh, it really looks like it is meant to be there. And what we want is to change the world. So if there's anybody watching this who thinks that, um, thinks that they're interested in what we're doing, thinks that potentially they could help us with either distribution in different areas of the globe, you know, in North America, or could help us with uh, connections or investment or whatever it is that you, you think is applicable, please reach out to me because we are definitely gonna change the world. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that awesome insight. I learned so much and I'm sure the audience did as well. Let's hear a big virtual round of applause for Kane. All right. If you're looking for your next program session, you can check the program page to find where you're headed next, or you can take some time to do some networking. Either way, we'll see you around. Thank you.